hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got a wall mounted handsaw rack. Well, normally I keep my modest selection of my favorite handsaws in a drawer in my tool chest. And I was thinking that that was the safest way to keep them. They were out of harm's way, etc. And then the other day when I took out a handsaw, I noticed that there was a little chip on one of my handles and that kind of bothered me because it looked like it had come in contact with another tool in the drawer and damaged my handle. And while some may think that's no big deal, to me it is a big deal. So I want to get them out of the drawer and onto the wall where they're away and separate it and they can't knock into each other, etc, etc. Now I really don't have a plan for this, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but it all starts off with a scrap piece of melamine. Well, I have this scrap piece that was salvaged from an old desk, and I think this is the platform that I want to use to hold my saws. Now, the idea here is that they will sit upright in their own custom slots all the way along here. Now, this measures four and a half inches wide and 12 inches long, and it was made this size to accommodate the space on the wall that I have, because in my shop, wall space is a premium. So the first thing that I want to do is using the saw itself, I want to place it on the left-hand side and just see roughly where I need my first kerf to hold the first saw. And we'll just give it a little tick mark here, right there, and take a measurement. And it's three quarters of an inch. So just to give it a little bit extra, I'm gonna come in one inch from the edge of the board. Now I've already measured the other um, kerfs or the other handles of my saws and I know that I want the kerf to end at about one inch in before it gets into the bulbous part that will hold the rest of the saw. And let me show you what I mean by that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a mark here at one inch. So from this one inch mark out will be a kerf. And in the case of these saws here, they will actually be a much uh, deeper kerf here. It will continue on, but there will be a recess right here that is going to hold or allow this handle to sit in. And if I take a measurement of that hole or that circle, it looks to be one and three sixteenths of an inch. So that means I want the edge of that one and three sixteenths to be right there. So if I put a mark at two and three sixteenths, this is now the extent of my hole. And what I want to do is mark the center here and I want to place a Forstner bit hole that is about, I'm going to say about a quarter of an inch deep right in the center between this line and this line. And now right along that line at one inch all the way to the back side of this circle, I'm going to cut a one eighth inch wide kerf. Now you can do this on the bandsaw, you can use a handsaw for it, um, you can even use the saw that you're planning on placing in there if you want. Um, for me, you guys know what I like to do. I'm going to use the scroll saw because it'll just be quicker and easier for me. So let me get that cut and I'll show you where we're going to go from there. And what you end up with is something like this. And the object here is that when this hangs on the wall, your saw will slide into that slot and your handle will sit right in that hole, keeping it from falling through and supporting it. It's out of the way, it's out of harm's way, it's not gonna knock with the other tools. So that's one done. Now I have two saws like this, so I'm going to repeat the exact same process with the other one. And what I will end up doing, I'll have to measure the handle to make sure of the dimensions. I will also have to check for clearance against the holes that we just, or the hole that we just cut as well as the kerf. Um, but it will be a custom job 
Same process as this. I'll get that one done and then I'll come back and see you. All right, and with that one cut, there we go. There's those two saws hanging just fine. So now I want to take my attention away from these and we will turn our attention to some of my other saws. In this case, it'll be my carcass saws. And they're a little different as far as how I want to mount them in this board. So the process will essentially be the same, except there's no hole drilling. It is all scroll saw work for me here because I want to accommodate for this spine that is on the saws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a careful measurement here and I will cut out what would look like sort of an oddly shaped keyhole. And well, you know what? Let me get that marked out and I'll show you what it's gonna look like. So I just wanna cut this out now at the scroll saw, taking out that 1-8 kerf and as well, this kind of keyhole section here that will hold the spine of my saw. And when you get that done, you get something that looks like this. Now let me show you how the saw fits into this one. So instead of sliding in the front as our other ones do, this one drops down from the top and it'll sit just like that. That keyhole will prevent the saw from coming out and these teeth that are facing out, well, I intend to keep my guards on them so that I'm not reaching in and getting cut up um, by the saw. So I need to cut a few more like this because I have two more saws like this. So I'll get those cut and then we'll move on from there. And that would be it for the holes for my hand saws. Now I'm leaving this extra space here because we all know uh, in reality this, this isn't the end of my hand saws. You know there's going to be additions. So it looks like I'll have room to add at least another three there for future consideration. Now there's more to do with that, but I have another piece of the melamine here, another scrap piece and I want to now make the exact same setup as what we did for the, for the other hand saws, but I want to do it for my assortment of smaller things, things like my two gent saws and the, uh, the razor saws that I have, my ultra fine razor saw. This is actually my fret wire cutting saw um, for making instruments. So all of these things, my flush cuts, they will all get done in the exact same fashion. And it's all a matter of just doing careful, careful measuring. Now I've already tested in this one and found that my flush cuts will fit perfectly in the exact same size hole as what my carcass saws fit in. So I think the only difference here though is I don't like the way they tilt off to one side like that. So what I will probably do is end up tilting my scroll saw blade a couple of degrees before I cut this hole and that will give it a taper to let it wedge in place. The rest of them will be things like measuring the ferrule around this ultra fine saw to make sure that we have a hole that is the proper size for this to sit down in and have it sit properly. Same thing with the fret wire saw and um, the, the normal razor saw. So I don't think we need a video of me measuring all of these, marking and laying out and cutting, etc., etc. I'm going to get the rack done for the smaller saws, and then we can carry on with the build because they're both pretty much the same from that point. Well, I have my two upper boards completed, and what I've done is I have cut two backboards. Now, these two backboards are four inches wide, and they are shorter than these by double the distance of the thickness of our board. Depending on what board you use, basically you need to cut it shorter than two thicknesses of the same board. And I have cut these little 30 degree angle brackets over at the table saw. So the first thing that I want to do here is I want to measure and we're going to drill and countersink a couple holes in each side of these brackets so that we can screw them together 
just like this. We will also, right in the middle across here, drill a couple of wall mounting holes. So I have drilled and countersunk all of our mounting holes in both our top pieces and our support brackets. But when this thing is mounted now, we're going to have this rough, raw edge. And come on, I mean, <laughs> we're not barbarians. So we've got some of this pre-glued veneer edging. And all you want to do for that is you will lay it in place, cut it to length, you will sit it in place. It will have an overhang, don't worry about it. And I have my grandmother's <laughs> old iron um, that I keep in the shop for this sort of thing. So we're gonna heat it up to get that glue to melt and it will attach itself there. We'll rub it down with a scrap of stock to get some good adhesion. And then what you can do is take a sharp chisel and we'll just trim it off a little more. I'm going to trim it off flush with the edges of our board. There we go. There's that side. The key here is a sharp chisel, guys. Now you can buy the specific trimmers for this stuff, but you don't need it if you have good sharp chisels. So we just run our chisel along. Like that. And then on this side, just like that. And then all it takes at this point, now that you have that front edge all uh, surfaced, just a little piece of sandpaper. And I like to just kind of touch up the edges here with some sandpaper. It takes that sharp edge off because this stuff is like razor blades. And there we go. There is one bracket done. So I'm going to add the edging to all the rest of our pieces that will be exposed. And once we get that done, we can assemble this thing. So for the assembly, I'm just drilling pilot holes here. I have it clamped together. And I'm just going to use some number eight by inch and a half screws and we will screw this thing together. That is basically it. Once we get our side brackets here screwed onto our back plates, we can then take our top pieces, lay them in place, just like this, making sure we're flush with the back and the sides, drill some pilot holes down through, some number eight screws to hold it together, and then all we have to do is mount it to the wall. And then all that's left to do is put your saws in it. And there you have it. A wall mounted handsaw rack. Guys, this project, as some of my other ones here on the show, came from necessity. Once I saw that little bit of damage that was on the one handle of one of my favorite saws, that was enough to tell me to get it out of the drawer and get it on the wall up out of harm's way. Um, this is a great little project that's it's easily customized to your applications and to your saws. It's just a matter of careful measuring. You may be wise if you are trying to make one of these for yourself to test on some scrap wood. Get a scrap of the same thickness of the piece that you're going to be mounting your saws in and cut some test holes, cut some test grooves. See what you need, see what fits, see how the saw hangs. 
Um, I was lucky on this that I was able to, to get around all of that testing stuff, but even those saws that I didn't like the way they hang, uh, hung rather, I ended up actually tilting my scroll saw blade by three degrees and cutting it so that the hole slopes in like this. So as the saw goes in, it kind of wedges it in place and holds it securely. But for sure, you can customize this to your own use. The key factor here, I think, in any of it is no matter what kind of rack you make, you need to ensure that your saws are not going to pop out of there and hit the ground because hitting the floor from a height of three, three and a half feet, that can do some damage. And uh, these ones are very secure. They're not going to be going anywhere. And I'm quite happy with the results. Now, I did leave room on the edges of both of these uh, saw racks for expansion in case I should add another saw and need to put it up in the rack. And for that reason, those flat surfaces that hold the saws, there's no glue there. They are just screwed in. In fact, there's no glue in this whole project. So if you're going to make this project, just ensure that if you are leaving room for expansion, that you don't glue it together because it would be one heck of a job to get those cutouts cut once you've got it all put together and uh, said and done sort of thing. So kind of plan ahead that way. And guys, this one was a lot of fun. I like these fly by the seat of your pants things. You never know what you're going to end up with. And at least with this one, I think it looks great. It's very functional and it will help to keep my hand saws safe and in great condition for many years to come. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's show. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss notifications of future episodes of the show. As always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're going to try this for yourself if you're a guy like me and had your saws in a drawer. And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.